Indeed, all praise belongs to Allah the Most High. We thank him and we seek his aid and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge with him from the evil of ourselves and from our bad actions. Whoever Allah guides, then there's no one who can mislead him, and whoever Allah causes to go astray, then there's no one to guide him. I bear witness, we bear witness, that there is no deity except Allah, who is unique and without partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his worshiper and his messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his family and his companions and those who follow them with good intentions until the day of judgment. O you who believe, fear Allah, as he should be feared, and don't die, except as Muslims again. O you who believe, fear Allah, as he should be feared, and don't die, except as Muslims. And O mankind, be careful of your duty to your Rab who created you from a single soul, and from it created its mate, and from the two of them he spread forth many men and women. Be careful of your duty to Allah, whom you demand your mutual rights, and be careful of your duty to the wounds that bore you. Indeed, Allah is our Raqib over you. O you who believe, fear Allah, and always speak the truth. He will cause your deeds to be beneficial, and he will forgive for you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, then he has truly achieved a tremendous accomplishment. For indeed, the best speech is the book of Allah, and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad wasallam. And the most evil of all affairs are newly invented matters which has no precedence in Islam. And indeed, all innovations are astray, and each astray is in the hellfire. O Allah. Save us from it, O oh Allah, accept our dua. And when we read this Qutbah uh, Hajjah each week, that should be enough. That should be enough for the, the proper guidance, the proper guidance that we are to receive from Allah. Just like uh, Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, he made the statement about Surah to Asr. He said, if only Surah to Asr was revealed then that should be enough for the guidance for mankind. But Allah gave us a whole book, a whole book. And inshallah, it's our duty, it's our job to bring forth gems from the book so that the guidance can continue, so that you can have further guidance. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim Truly the muttaqeen, the pious or righteous persons, will be amidst the gardens and water springs of paradise. It will be said to them, enter therein the paradise in peace and security, and we shall remove from their breasts any sense of injury that they may have. So they will not be like the brothers facing each other on the thrones. They, they will, they, they, so they will be like brothers facing each other on the thrones. No sense of fatigue shall touch them, nor shall they be ever asked to leave. And that's an ayat from the Quran. And Abu Hurairah reported that the Prophet wasallam said, There are seven whom Allah will shade on the day when there is no shade but his. And we'll basically get into the seven and we're all familiar with the hadith about the shade at seven and the question I wanted to ask brothers and sisters today based on this hadith who are you and I asked myself that who am I based on this particular hadith and this is in then just one hadith when you read about the shade at seven and it's online it's offline it's everywhere when you read it, and I just want you to compare yourself, because again, that's the yardstick that we measure ourselves by. The companions, the prophets who, who have given us the message. This is, these are the yardsticks that we have to basically determine who are we. They are the mirrors. The prophet, peace be upon him, said that we should be mirrors of one another. And so, based on the reflection that we see in each other, what are we seeing and who are we? That first person, the just ruler, the just ruler. And is the ruler just one who rules over a nation? Or is it a person who also has responsibilities, responsibilities over people, whether it could be a supervisor or, or a, a um, employer at a, at a job or it, you know, someone who just has certain types of responsibilities for other people, being just a just ruler, but it can also be the ruler of a country. 
you know, it's just like when we look at all of the corruption in this country and all these corrupt leaders that have come forth in this country, it's a reflection you know, of the condition of the people. The people have gotten so far, they, they say that this is a Judeo-Christian society, but they've gotten so far away from Judaism as well as Christianity. They, they will promote it. This is a Judeo-Christian society. So there's so much corruption and they're so far away from what that which Allah would have them be a part of. And so you get corrupt leaders. What is the saying? That the people get the leadership that they deserve. And so as Muslims, we have to be of those who are striving. If Allah gives us responsibility, even if the responsibility of just our own families, what does the Prophet ﷺ say? That the best of you are those who are best to their family, and I'm the best of you because I'm the best to my family. In the Muslim world, there should be no domestic violence shelters. There should be no elderly homes, old folks' homes, or where you tuck your parents away in their latter days. So we should be of those who are the best to our families. And if, if that's the respons only responsibility that we have, a just ruler, what did the Prophet Sallallahu said? Every one of you is a shepherd and responsible for his flock. The leader of the people is a guardian and is responsible for his subjects. A man is a guardian of his family and he's responsible for them. A woman is a guardian of her husband's home and his children and she is responsible for them. The servant of a man is a guardian of the property of his master and he is responsible for it. No doubt, every one of you is a shepherd and responsible for their flock. We all have responsibilities and so we have to take that responsibility seriously. What's the number two? Number, number two person who will receive shade on the day in which there will be no shade. It said a youth who grew up in the worship of Allah a youth who grew up in the worship of Allah. I took Shahada on my 23rd birthday. And uh, me and some of the brothers were talking this morning about the things that happened. And when my kids talked to me, what were you like when you were growing up? I said, I don't talk about anything before 1978. Mm -hmm. You know, you know they, 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 they know the answer when they ask me a question. I was raised in the projects. and. I pray, I wish that Allah had given me Islam during that time, the early days. And for those of you who have come into Islam in their youth, and alhamdulillah, I believe there'll be a youth or two taking shahada today. And so you get an opportunity to get so much good done, remembering your Lord in your youth. Not to take shahada as a, a means of a gang initiation or, or just to, to the popularity. I know in Philadelphia that's been one of the things that you have people, you know, Islam has become more like a fad in, in that city and like other cities. And so we have to get away from that because when we took shahada, and again, those of us who were dealing in, 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 in all sorts of illicit things in the streets, and we recognize hypocrisy because we were committed religiously to the corner. And so when we wanted to come to a religion, then we wanted to be serious about it, just as serious as we were about the, uh, seeking the world. And so we recognized people who were hypocrites. And so if we wanted to come to Islam, then we didn't want to be hypocritical about it. And so it's important, young people who are coming to Islam, Islam should facilitate a change in you. And I use the term intrinsic change. Intrinsic means an inside change. Extrinsic, you can wear a kufi, that's outside. You can wear a kufi, you can wear a thaw. What Imam Jamil used to tell us, you can dress up a dummy, but he's still a dummy. You know, and so you look wise, another saying he had, look wise and to do otherwise. And so we want to have intrinsic change. The Prophet Sallallahu said about everything can rust even the heart can rust. And that which removes the rust from the heart is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, if we had the opportunity to be a Muslim in our youth, you have the opportunity to do so much good, as well as you have the opportunity to do so much wrong. 
because a person can be a Muslim and still engage in wrong. I was sharing this morning about a story I read about a man who became a Muslim. I believe he was uh, in the Netherlands or somewhere. And he became a Muslim, but he got dawa in a shooting gal gallery, if you know what a shooting gallery is, where people were shooting heroin. He was a heroin addict. And he was there with another person shooting heroin. And, and the guy, he gave him his name. He said, what kind of name is that? He, I think the brother was from Morocco. And he said, yeah, I'm a Muslim, but you know, and he explained to him what Islam was. He said, what I'm doing now is not Islam. I'm a bad Muslim. I'm a bad Muslim. And this person, he went out and sought more about Islam. He became a Muslim. He got off drugs and everything. We don't know what happened to that person. This person gave him dawah in the dope house. He was still a Muslim. Because guess what, brothers and sisters? There'll be Muslims in the hellfire. And he said, the hypocrite gets to the depths of the fire. Because the hypocrite, you know, they will basically, you know, say, you know, oh, well, uh, um, the, the, the haram things I'm doing are okay. They'll try to make wrong right and make right wrong. And so we have to be of those who will be the best Muslims that we could possibly be. And then as long as you have breath in your body, there's an opportunity for change. And again, intrinsic change is more valuable and more more welcome than the extrinsic change. Just dressing the part is not enough. You have to basically live the part. Because Islam is a way of life. It's not just a religion. Religion is just a set of rituals. There the are aspects of Islam which are religiosity, but also there's aspects of Islam which means that you are living a way of life. Deen means way of life. In other words, you are making a total change, not a partial change. And, and we change just like the seasons change. Allah says he is El Latif, the subtle. He will change you. You know, just like I'm looking at old pictures of me. I, I remember one time I had no gray. No gray. And I look back, look down and see all the gray, and look at the old pictures in the same way. But inside, how much have I changed from that person that took Shahada on March 29th, 1978? How much have you changed? Who are you? Who are you? We have to ask that question each and every day. Because you have Muslims, as the, the hadith says, that you know that there will be some people who will do the work of Jannah and get a handspan. And the scholars say a handspan is from the elbow to the fingertips. A handspan to Jannah and start doing the work of the hellfire. And get the hellfire. And there will be some people who will do the work of the hellfire all their life. Get a hand span to the hellfire and start doing the work of Jinnah. And they'll get Jinnah. So it's how you go out of here that matters. Remembering your Lord and your youth, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day. The Prophet peace be upon him said, keep your lips moist with the remembrance of Allah. It doesn't mean that we can't work and we can't socialize with other people. But again, just think how much time we do so many other things. In the surah uh, that I read all, every week, the surah Rahman, the, the refrain, it says, Allah, Which of the favors of your Lord do you deny? And you don't appreciate breathing until you can't breathe. You have labored breathing. You don't appreciate walking until you no longer have the ability to walk, or talking until you no longer have the ability to talk, or hearing until you have the no, no longer the ability to hear or seeing, until you have no longer have the ability of sight. Which of the favors of your Lord do you deny? And these are just some of the basic biological things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. But who are you? How much gratitude do we show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We're reflecting on the ayat this morning about how, was it, there were some street terms we used, but I won't use that here, that you are made from a fluid despised, yet you stand as an open disputant. We didn't create ourselves. Allah, he's al Khaliq. he created us. He caused us to be formed in the womb. And so we have to recognize the favors that Allah has given us. 
again, be a good shepherd. And we look at the youth that we read about in the Quran, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when the fire was cooled for him, when Yusuf alayhi salam, when his brothers betrayed him, the companions of the cave, who were the remembrance of Allah, allowed them to get out of that cave, and Ali radiallahu anhu became a Muslim at a very young age. And, and when I was living in Saudi Arabia, I used to see people who were born Muslim, maybe never had, never remembered a relative that wasn't a Muslim great-grandfather, great-grandfather, all the way back to the time of the prophet, peace be upon him. And they used to say, I'm going to wait till I get old to become religious. <clears throat> and I just tell them, I'm the first man that made it past 30 in my family. My two brothers died. One died at 18, one died at 27. You're not guaranteed 105 years. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed the next minute. Remember your Lord in your youth. Remember your Lord in your middle age. Remember your Lord in, in elderly times. Keep your lips moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't wait to get old to become righteous. Number three, the one whose heart is attached to the masjid. The one whose heart is attached to the masjid. And I know we were in COVID. And during that time, many of the masajids were shut down. Well, I think we're a little bit away from the detriment of COVID. And many of the masajids throughout the nation have become more like mausoleums than masjids. A brother came in the other day. He said, I guess Ramadan over. It's just me, the Mu'adhan, and somebody else in the masjid. I guess Ramadan over. And so are we just showing out just for Ramadan or Juma? A day should not go by that you shouldn't visit some masjid. You don't necessarily have to come to our mosque. But visit some masjid every day, especially for the brothers. 25 to 27 times the blessings are increased when you, when you pray in Jamaat at the masjid. But Shaitan says, no, you know, chill. Chill, you know, you can, you can pray here, you can pray there. <coughs> And this is one of the things that we have to look at. We have to get into a post-COVID type of, of worship and ibadah. You know, we had certain basically exemptions during that time. But, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, Allah has lifted that test off of us for the most part. And so we need to get into the proper attitude and be able to start to visit the masjids on a regular basis, more regularly, more regularly. One who's a heart was attached to the masjid, and again, you can be broke and have your heart attached to the masjid, brothers and sisters. You know, like I said earlier, you know, many of us were attached to the corners. And we went to the corner religiously, religiously. We, we thought we would miss something if we didn't get off that corner, get on that corner. You know, if we basically put half the energy in what we sought in the world and in the dunya and on the corner, if we just put half that energy into our deen, then we most likely we all get gender. <coughs> we would all get gender because you can see that stuff. You can see that stuff. But you can't see or perceive what's happening, what's coming next. Just like we couldn't perceive what was going on in the world when we were in our mother's womb couldn't perceive. That was our world, bouncing around. And this is just, again, as I mention all the time, this is just another womb. True life begins once we leave this phase of life. That's when true life begins. Anas ibn Malik anhu, reported that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, from the nearness of the hour is that the crescent moon will be sighted, enlarged, and it will be said it is the second night that the mosque will be taken as mere fairways and that sudden death will become prevalent. And so a fairway is just, just you know, just a play area. Just, you know, just something that uh, you're on your way to something. In other words, the masjids will not be taken seriously. And that's, these are signs of the hour. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was once sitting 
with his most beloved companions, Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali, and Uthman, radiallahu anhu. And he said, I wish I could see my brothers. And they all started looking around, and, and then they asked him, are we not your brothers? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa replied, you are my companions, but my brothers are the ones that will come after me, and they will believe in me even though they have not seen me. They will believe in me even though they have not seen me. So we who believe in the Prophet's mission are his brothers. And we have to ask, do we believe in the Prophet's mission? Number four, two who love each other and meet each other and depart from each other for the sake of Allah. Two who loved each other, meet each other and depart from each other for the sake of Allah. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu relates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Allah will ask on the day of judgment, where are those who loved each other for the sake of, sake of my glory? Today, on a day in which there is no shade but mine, I shall shade them with my shade. And it's a hadith from Muslim. A hadith from Muslim. And we have to reflect on these again. This is our job description. Who are we? Who are we? Number five. A person who is tempted by an attractive person of high status, but rejects them, saying, I fear Allah. A person who is tempted by an attractive person of high status, but rejects them, saying, I fear Allah. It was just like a person like Elon Musk or whoever, you know, the, the billionaires and the trillionaires. They come at you and say, hey, you know, just, just do this and do that. There was one brother, he, um, he was in the, in the comedy field, a Muslim brother, and he was um, going to, uh, he was interviewed for a job on Saturday Night Live. And he was saying how during the interview, uh, the man said, oh, I see you Muslim. And um, he said, yes. He said, well, um, if you had to do a skit that, that's against your religion, uh, would you do it? He said, no. The man said, have a nice day. Have a nice day. Just, you know, he, 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 he would have gotten the keys to the kingdom if he would have compromised his dean. But he knew who he was. And he knew who he is. And he, alhamdulillah, he done went on. He got a master's degree in Islamic studies as well. And, he, 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 you know, he not only uses his comedy, but he also is able to, um, you know, drop pearls of wisdom, you know, you know on, on a weekly and daily basis. And so we have to know who we are, brothers and sisters. We don't just say that we're Muslim. Because Allah says, don't say that you believe, for belief has not yet entered your heart. Only say that you're Muslim, and then allow, again, that intrinsic change to occur. The Prophet Sallallahu said, by him in whose hand is my soul. If you do not sin, Allah would replace you with people who would sin, and they would seek the forgiveness of Allah, and he would forgive them. They would seek the forgiveness of Allah, and he would forgive them. So, Again, as human beings, we're going to err, we're going to sin, but the important thing is to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah also says that if you are tempted by shaitan, then seek refuge with Allah indeed. He alone is the all-hearing and the all-knowing. And Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to supplicate, O turner of hearts, keep my heart firm upon your religion. O turner of hearts, keep your heart firm upon your religion. Again, seeking refuge in Allah, recognizing that temptations are tests that Allah sends to us. Self-vigilance is guarding oneself. And then how, what do we do quietly? We know we have to wake up before Fajr and pray the rakats of the tahajjid. Indeed, Allah says that shaitan whispers to those mindful of Allah. And when he whispers, they remember their Lord. Then they start to see things clearly. Number six, one who spends in charity and hides it in, in such that their right hand does not know what their left hand has given. 
And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that charity is due for every joint in every person on every day the sun comes up. To act justly between two people is charity. To help a man with his mount, lifting him onto it or hoisting him up, up to it is, is a charity. A good word is a charity. And removing a harmful thing from the road is a charity. And this again from Bukhari and Muslim. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, when a, man's die, when a man dies, his deeds come to an end except for three things. Sadaqa Jariya, in other words, ceaseless charity, a knowledge which is beneficial, or a virtuous descendant who prays for them. A virtuous descendant who prays for them. And again, that's from a Muslim hadith. Number seven, one who remembers Allah in private and weeps. One who remembers Allah in private and weeps. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that, uh, he said, when two eyes will not be touched by the fire, and the two are an eye that has cried from the fear of Allah, and an eye that has stayed awake guarding for the sake of Allah. And this again, a Tramidi hadith. And so when the, the people are holding security, that's again, that's a, a, an eye that won't touch the fire. So it's important that we review the shade at seven and see how close we are to any of them. And because again, the shaitan will make us want to forget these people, the shade at seven. Who are we? Who are we? If I've said anything that's inconsistent with what Allah has given us and the Prophet Sallallahu has given us, I take full responsibility for that. And if I've said anything in which you have gained some new insight, as always, our praise belongs to Allah. La ilaha illallah wahduhu la sharika la lahu muk wa lahu ham wa huwa la kulli shay'in qadir. Remember the, again the shade at seven, the just ruler, the youth who grew up in the worship of Allah, the one whose heart is attached to the masjid, two people who love each other for the sake of Allah, the person who gives charity, charity secretly such that their left hand does not know what the right hand has given, the person who remembers Allah in solitude and their eyes fill up with tears, the one who refuses the advances of a person who is attracted and of a high stature, saying, I fear Allah. And Allah says, and those who keep their duty to their Lord will be led to paradise in groups till when they reach it. And its gates will be opened before them, before their arrival for their reception. And the keepers will say, Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you, you have done well. So enter here to abide therein, and they will say, All praises and thanks be to Allah, who has fulfilled his promise to us and has made us inherit this land. We can dwell in paradise, where we will know how excellent a reward for the pious and good workers. Again, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the message that was given to us in the last testament, the Quran. Who are you? Who are you? And again, we have to ask that question each and every day. And in closing, just a brother had asked for us to pray for his paternal uncle who died in India on Wednesday. His name is Riaz, Riaz Ahmed. And we ask Allah to grant him Jannah for the good that he has done and also comfort those whom he has left behind. And oh Allah, you know, again, allow us to be guided by the, the, the loss or the death of any of your servants. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا لقتنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما هممته والذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تهمنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وفوانا وكفلنا وحمنا أنت مولانا فنسونا أهل الكون الكافرين Our Lord take us not to task if we forget or fall into error 
Our Lord, lay not on us a burden such as you did lay on those who have gone before us. Our Lord, lay not on us a burden which we do not have the power to bear and overlook our faults and give us, forgive us and have mercy upon us. You are our protector and grant us the victory over those who disbelieve. Ikamim and Fadli.